Hi all, this is Jan Almighty and welcome to this video. So, uh, maybe a bad day, a hair day for me, but a beautiful and sunny day and a very good day for you because today I'm starting a new series about stories about masters and today's master and the story who I will start covering is Anatoly Karpov. So, I hope you like the choice, after all, you did vote for it. For me, maybe a kind of a surprise because I really didn't hope that Karpo will be the next in line to actually cover him. Okay, and it was a good good surprise because I really like Karpo and his style. After all, he is considered to be uh, one of the best players who ever played the game. And yeah, so let's just start with the story. So first, uh, let me cover a couple of basics. So most, most notable things that Karpo is famous for is... Uh, probably being a successor to Fischer as a world champion in 1975. Yeah, Fischer forfeited his uh, world championship title. And yeah, Karpov, uh, yeah, in 1975 was awarded that title. After that, uh, he was a world champion for 10 years. Uh, he had a rivalry with Viktor Korchnoi and also with Gary Kasparov, who took the title from him in 1985. But uh, yeah, held it for some years, and as uh, as you all know, Kasparov had some problems with Fide, and yeah, went out of the organization, started doing his own thing. I mean, started a new thing, and uh, because of that, the championship title was given back to Karpov. So those are the couple of uh, probably the most uh, the things that uh, Karpov is most famous for, and yeah. Um, I would like to start this story with this game, uh, which was played actually in the Moscow University uh, Championship. So a little bit about uh, Karpov's early life. So he actually started playing chess when he was four years old um, and uh, became a candidate master in 19, uh, um, in, with, with 11 years old. Uh, when he was 11 years old and uh, yeah after that he actually got in into Botwinik's uh, chess academy a very famous and a very good uh, chess academy and uh, yeah at the start actually Botwinik wasn't too happy with Karpov actually there was this one thing um, where uh, Botwinik actually said that uh, Karpov doesn't have a clue about chess and <laughs> that he doesn't see him succeeding in chess that sh he should probably uh yeah just do something el else with his life but karpov as uh, you can all see proved him wrong there and uh, yeah just showed uh, with his talent and with his amazing games that he is quite a good player he he used uh, uh, the homework that Botvin gave and also used his methods of studying chess and everything to actually become the player that he is was at that time and also is today so uh yeah that was uh, pretty much it for that uh with uh yeah when he was 17 years old he became the uni uh, the european junior ch uh, chess champion and uh by the age of 19 in 1969 the year where this game was played he actually became the world uh junior chess champion but first I would like to show you this game. As I said, this is a very good game if you want, if you're new to Karpov's games. If you have never seen any of his games, this is a perfect introduction, introduction game because I'm sure that after this game, you will definitely start to love Karpov and you would like to see more and more of his games. So with that build up, I think it's time to show you the actual game. So we have and also one other thing, so here he is playing against Evgeny Geek, so uh, a very famous chess author, so he wrote a lot of books about chess. Uh, as you can see, it is a pretty new picture for him at that time, yeah, okay, he was uh, about, I mean, he was uh, Karpov's age since this is a university championship. And yeah, but unfortunately, because of copyright reasons, I couldn't have used, I didn't find any of his younger pictures and I couldn't, I didn't want to use it in this, uh, in this, yeah, over my head. So this is a more newer picture, but I guess uh, it's, uh, yeah. It's definitely usable but enough about that let's uh, go back to the game we have the sicilian game and after this we have the knight dwarf so d6 d4 c takes d4 and knight takes on d4 quickly go through the opening and show you the most important part uh, that they played the dragon variation so when you see a dragon variation played in a, in a chess youtube video you definitely know that there will be some fireworks fireworks involved we have bishop to e3 and now bishop to g7 and now f3 stopping knight to g4 a very common idea in this variation of the knight dwarf and now castles uh, Karpov plays bishop to c4 the variation which stops essentially pushing of the d5 pawn 
So now we have knight to c6, queen to d2 preparing the queenside castle, queen to a5 and queenside castle. So now, now already after bishop to d7, uh, we are in a position. So as white and, and, and also with black, I found myself in this situation many, many times. And now is actually the time where the tension starts. And why is that? Because it is actually a race in this opening. So white wants to push these pawns actually to attack the black king and black wants to push these pawns to actually attack the white king. And the thing is, the one who is faster, who plays the correct moves will actually win the game. Uh, the, pledge, the the chances at, at this point are kind of equal, I would say, maybe more more leaning to white's end but yeah we will see here also i mean this isn't the only way to go about winning this game you you don't have to just push the pawns it is the most usual and the most common way but uh, here there are some other ideas and we will also see them in this game we have h4 played and rook from f to c8 so yeah you would definitely want to poke put the rook on the c file because it is the file where the king is and also a lot of white pieces Oh, sorry. So first, actually, knight to e5 was played. And uh, yeah, this bishop was attacked. And after bishop to b3, then the rook was played on the c-file with the same idea. But here, uh, Karpov to actually improve and uh, push on with his attack, he played h5. So sacrificing the pawn. And we have knight captures on h5. And now, not g4, but first, uh, bishop to h6. And now you have actually one... Uh, uh, one other idea, uh, then uh, so here uh, Geek actually sacrificed his dragon, so on h6, I mean not sacrifice, but I would say sacrifice because this dragon in the Sicilian dragon variation is a very strong piece, sometimes stronger than a rook, and you should definitely keep it on. Usually when people play rook away from f8, so that the, this dragon isn't pinned, they play him to b bishop to h8 in order to keep it to keep it on this diagonal as a strong attacker. But here, Geek, as I've said, uh, played bishop captures on h6, but also one other fun move is knight to d3. And the idea is, if white captures with a pawn, you can play bishop to d4 and yeah, keep this uh, dragon, as I keep calling him, and also open up the c file, keep the pressure on the c3 square, and have a really nice attack. And on the other hand, if the queen takes, you can capture on h6 with a tempo, king goes to b1, and now bishop back to g7, keeping the dragon on this diagonal and keeping it with the attack. But uh, okay, here, as we said, bishop captures on h6, Queen captures on h6, this is also a good idea. I mean, an okay idea because with sacrificing your dragon, you're uh, pushing the queen away from the defenses. And this allows you a very good sacrifice of the rook, which is a rook captures on c3. So a very famous and common sacrifice by the rook in the Sicilian dragon. We have big captures on c3 and now queen captures on c3. Uh, after this, knight to e2, actually the only game that keeps, keeps Karpov in the yeah, and and his chances to actually continue to play the game. Uh, now Black needs to make a decision. Will he give a check here and then yeah, kind of yeah, uh, follow the king around the board with some nasty checks, or he, will he back up? So here, uh, Geek actually played queen to c5, and this allows Karpov to actually go for some stronger attack. Here, um, he could have played instead of g4, a rook captures on h5 right away. Because after g captures on h5, you have rook to h1, and uh, the, the attack on the h file will be very, very strong. Um, but uh, instead of that, here, first g4 was played, knight to f6, g5, knight back to h5, and only now Karpov did sacrifice the rook on h5. Now, it is also good, but it gives black a couple of chances more. Because after g takes on h5 and rook to h1, now he has queen to e3 which wouldn't be possible if the pawn was on g2. But okay, still white is in the attack. Here he goes king to b1. And now what happens if uh, queen captures on e2? Then after that, you have queen captures on h5 and there is no real way how to actually cap stop the capture on h7. And after that, queen to h8 check. So yeah, in this position, actually, it wouldn't be so good uh, for, for black. Uh, if, uh, for example, white would capture with the rook, then queen to d1 check, and uh, king to b2, queen to d4, uh, black here has at least a draw. So, this, that's, this was a possibility, but here, 
uh, yeah, Geek played Queen to F3 in order to yeah still attack so defend this pawn. But now Rook can capture on H5 because there is no Queen D1, Queen D4, and now E6. So move in order to defend and kind of block off this bishop. But Karpov uh, playing as a machine to be honest uh, finds the best move and kind of a natural move in this position, which is g6 continue with the attack continue with the sacrifices and now once again there are a couple of options for geek here he can capture okay not of course with this pawn because this is a checkmate in one on h8 he can capture with the f pawn but uh, this leads to a forced variation with uh, these couple of moves knight to f7 so this is all forced you capture on um, a8 and uh, queen captures on e2 this is this is a position where white is better but the game is still played um, but uh, here, instead of that, instead of capturing with the pawn, geek uh, capture with the with the knight. So after queen captures on h7, you have king to f8, and there is no uh, check on h8. Instead of that, Karpov needs to find this next move, which still brings him the advantage, and that is rook to f5. Karpov, of course, found it, and uh, yeah, seeing him play this kinds of moves, uh, yet yeah, just uh, as I said, uh, makes you fall in love with him right away. Because now this queen is attacked and uh, yeah, if you capture with the pawn, as you can see, this is checkmate in one. Uh, and if you yeah, capture with the queen, just uh, pawn captures and all the threats are still here. And if the knight moves, you cannot capture and if the knight moves, you have queen to h8 check. So uh, Geek here actually found the best move to defend this position. I mean, it brings black a war definitely a lost position, but it's still... It is the best position, again, uh, move in the position, and this queen captures on b3. We have a captures on b3, and now e captures on f5. And now, after all of this, I mean, if you capture right away on f5, then just bishop captures, and after rook to c8, there are some chances on c2. But here, Karpo once again finds the best move, which is knight to f4. Offering the knight, because after knight to f4, you have queen to h8, king to e7, and after that, uh, black has lost the rook. So you don't, you don't want to capture that. And here, uh, to actually stop that, black played rook to d8. But now, yeah, after a couple of moves, so queen to h6, uh, king to e8, knight captures, f captures, queen captures, we check, king to e7, uh, queen to g5, king to e8, and e takes an f5. Black is completely lost, but he continued to play. Here we have rook to c8, uh, queen to g8, king to e7, uh, Queen to g7 check, king to d7, and after f6, actually here, geek resigned the game. And yeah, the reason is pretty simple, this pawn will become a queen, and this is just dead lost. Uh, so yeah, this is the first game that I wanted to show you in the story about Karpov. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, it is a very good attacking game. It comes from the Sicilian Dragon variation, so yeah, definitely a game you would want to see if you're keen keen on playing that uh, that defense and yeah uh, this is pretty much it uh, for this game uh, I wanted to say one more thing for the end of this video so up until now I have these three players that are for, whose stories I am going to be covering so Hosro, Capablanca, uh, Bobby Fischer and Anatoly Karpov so this is pretty much it for this time uh, until I finish f with one of the masters I will continue on with the new one but that doesn't mean that you cannot that I'm, that I'm not going to suge uh, not suggest but uh, cover games from other players at any point in time you should definitely suggest a game that you want to see in the comments down below just use the hashtag game of the day and uh, I will look into the game uh, see what happened and if I liked it I will definitely show it on my channel and of course uh, uh, throw your name into the fame <laughs> mentioning you uh, a subscriber who actually suggested it and yeah that is uh, I guess the plan for this channel and also one other thing uh, if there will be some actual event that I feel that I need to cover like uh, uh, who who actually won the Grenka tournament or some other uh, tournament where strong players are playing I will definitely cover that as well and yeah also from time to time I will put out an endgame video and of course I know I'm late on that I haven't done one in a, in a long while I should definitely do that as well as have a live stream very very soon but yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, as I've said, uh, I would like to thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.